How to make jams and preserves. Instead of paying top dollar for cute jam jars and fancy food stores, learn how to make your own delicious fruit spreads. You will need six cups of washed berries or other fruit, six cups of sugar, a large heavy bottom saucepan, a chilled teaspoon, six half pint jars with lids and screw bands, clean damp cloths, a boiling water canner, clean dish towels, a ladle, extra boiling water, and a jar lifter or stainless steel tongs. Optional, two tablespoons of lemon juice, a basket, and scones. Step one, wash your canning jars along with their lids and screw bands in very hot soapy water. Rinse well and let them air dry. Check for cracks and chips before using. Only use jars made specifically for canning. Step two, rinse the fruit. Remove skins, stems, and peels, and quarter the fruit if necessary. Toss it with the sugar and refrigerate the mixture overnight. Add lemon juice to cut sweetness if you like. Step three, put the teaspoon in the freezer. Put the fruit mixture in a large, heavy bottom saucepan, bring it to a low boil, lower the heat, and let it simmer until it thickens and becomes syrupy. This will take anywhere from five to 20 minutes, depending on the kind of fruit you use. Test jam for doneness by scooping up about half a teaspoon with the chilled teaspoon. If it cools to the consistency you like, it's done. If not, boil it a bit longer. Step four, as the fruit is simmering, sterilize the jars and lids according to the canner's instructions. Leave them submerged in the hot water until they're ready to be filled. Step five, remove the sterilized jars from the canner with a jar lifter or stainless steel tongs and place them on clean dish towels. Drain them upside down for one minute. Then, ladle the hot fruit mixture into the jars, leaving a quarter inch space on top and taking care not to splash any on the ceiling area. Wipe the rims with a clean, damp cloth and then screw on the lids. Step six, carefully lower the jars into your canner. Add enough water to fill the pot two inches above the jars and cover. When the water comes to a boil, let them boil for 10 minutes. If the water level hits the top of the jars, add more boiling water. If you plan to eat the jam within two weeks, skip boiling and just refrigerate it. You can also store it in the freezer until you're ready to eat it if you've used wide mouth canning jars made for freezing. Step seven, turn off the heat and remove the canner lid. Wait five minutes, then remove the jars carefully using the jar lifter or tongs. Let them cool on a towel spaced at least one inch apart for 24 hours. Don't attempt to re-tighten the jars. Step eight, when the jars are cool, make sure they're correctly sealed by looking for a slight indentation in the lid. If any did not seal properly, refrigerate them and eat the jam within two weeks. Wash the outside of the other jars and store in a cool, dry place out of direct light. They'll keep for about six months. Look for signs of spoilage, which include a bulging lid, leakage, a hissing sound when the lid is opened, mold, bubbles, a bad smell, or fruit that looks discolored or slimy. If you see any of these signs, toss it. Step nine, enjoy your homemade jam or make gifts out of it by nestling a jar in a cloth lined basket with scones. Did you know? Marmalade is thought to have been created in 1561 by the physician to Mary Queen of Scots when he mixed orange and crushed sugar to treat her seasickness. How to make ketchup. Why use store-bought ketchup when you can whip up a healthier, tastier, and cheaper version at home? You will need one 28 ounce can of whole tomatoes and puree, one medium onion chopped, one tablespoon of vegetable oil, one tablespoon of tomato paste, two thirds of a cup of dark brown sugar, a half a cup of vinegar, a half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of black pepper, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, and an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Optional, green peppers, apples, mangoes, or jalapeno pepper. Step one, pour the can of tomatoes along with their liquid into a blender and mix until smooth. Step two, heat the oil in a large saucepan and cook the onion until it's soft, about eight minutes. Step three, add the pureed tomatoes, tomato paste, sugar, vinegar, and spices. Simmer uncovered until very thick, about one hour, stirring occasionally. Be especially vigilant about stirring towards the end when the sauce begins to thicken. Step four, when the mixture has cooled down, pour it into the blender and puree it until smooth. Step five, put the ketchup in a covered container and chill at least two hours before using. Experiment with different flavors by throwing a couple of peeled and chopped green peppers, apples, or mangoes into the blender along with the tomatoes, or spicing up the recipe with a finely diced jalapeno pepper. Step six, enjoy your homemade ketchup. You'll have about a pint. It will stay good in the fridge for up to three weeks. You can also freeze it. Did you know Heinz ketchup was introduced in 1876 as a blessed relief for mother and other women in the household. 
How to make mayonnaise. Make your own mayonnaise. It's mostly just eggs and oil, and homemade tastes better than store-bought. You will need two egg yolks, one whole egg, one tablespoon of lemon juice, freshly squeezed, one teaspoon of Dijon or yellow mustard, one half teaspoon of salt, one quarter teaspoon of pepper, one cup of olive oil, not extra virgin, and one cup of canola oil. Optional, a food processor, herbs, spices, horseradish, onions, garlic, capers, and extra lemon juice or cider vinegar. Homemade mayonnaise contains raw egg. Don't leave it at room temperature or you risk a salmonella infection. Step one, put all the ingredients except the oil into a food processor and mix or whisk by hand until creamy. Customize your mayo with fresh herbs, spices, horseradish, onions, garlic, capers, or anything else you'd like. Step two, whisking continuously or with the food processor running, begin incorporating oil, just a few drops or two at a time, waiting 30 seconds after the first couple of additions of oil, then pouring it in a very slow stream. As you get to the end of the oil, check the texture. You may not need to use all the oil. If the mayo is too thick, thin it with a little lemon juice or cider vinegar. Step three, taste the mayo and adjust the seasoning if you need to. Transfer to a covered container and refrigerate. The mayo will stay good for three to five days. Step four, if the mayonnaise begins to separate, which it often does while refrigerated, reconstitute it by putting an egg yolk in a bowl and slowly whisking the broken mayo into the new egg yolk a little at a time. Did you know? Hellman's mayonnaise began as a salad and sandwich dressing made by New York City deli owner Richard Hellman's wife in 1905. How to make mustard. Whip up your own homemade mustard. It's easy, delicious, and economical. You will need three and a half tablespoons of white or yellow mustard seeds, two tablespoons of black mustard seeds, three and a half tablespoons of light brown sugar, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of turmeric, one teaspoon of dried herbs of your choice, and three quarters of a cup of white wine vinegar. Special equipment, a glass jar with a lid, and a mortar and pestle. Optional, onion, garlic, curry powder, horseradish, or caraway seeds, and tarragon, cider, or sherry vinegar. Step one, place a glass jar large enough to hold one cup of mustard plus its lid into a pot of boiling water for a few minutes to sterilize it. Step two, blend the mustard seeds, sugar, salt, turmeric, and herbs with a mortar and pestle until they are powdery. For a really easy homemade mustard, mix equal parts water and dry mustard, available in the spice section of your supermarket. Step three, gradually whisk in the vinegar, one tablespoon at a time, until you have a coarse paste. You can substitute beer or wine for the vinegar. Step four, let it stand for about 15 minutes to thicken. Step five, transfer the mustard to the jar, put the lid on, and let it sit in a cool, dark place for two weeks before using, which will allow the flavors to develop. Refrigerate once it's open. It will last for several months. Step six, experiment with new flavors in future batches. Add whatever you like, a pinch of onion, garlic, or curry powder, a teaspoon of horseradish or caraway seeds, or tweak the flavor by using tarragon or cider or sherry vinegar in place of white wine vinegar. Did you know? Dry mustard sprinkled in socks is an age-old way of preventing cold feet. How to make peanut butter. Sick of processed, mass-produced peanut butter? Follow this easy recipe and kiss the generic store-bought stuff goodbye. You will need two cups of shelled peanuts, two tablespoons of peanut oil, a food processor, and an airtight container. Step one, coat the peanuts in the oil and bake them at 350 degrees for six to eight minutes. Shake the nuts every two minutes so they don't burn. Step two, put the roasted peanuts into the food processor and grind them to a consistency of your liking. Step three, store the peanut butter in an airtight container. Step four, have some PB&J with your first batch of delicious peanut butter. Use it within 30 days. Did you know? It takes about 540 peanuts to make one 12-ounce jar of peanut butter.